So I'm going to move on to the uh, phase shift uh, and uh, amplifier next. Um, so an accurate phase shifter is a crucial component in any uh, IQ direct conversion style radio. Uh, its main job is to take the IQ signals and uh, change the phase between them by as close to 90 degrees as possible. Um, the signals basically can then be recombined and then depending on uh, the direction of the phase shift, plus or 90 degrees, either the upper or lower sideband is suppressed. So this task can be accomplished by a kind of variety of different techniques in uh, software-defined radios, for instance, uh, it, uh, digital signal processing is used to achieve the, the phase shift between the I and the Q signals. What I'm going to do is build up a phase shift network with op amps, and I have the circuit diagram for that below. So there are a number of good references out there uh, if you want to design your own um, phase shift network using uh, op amps. So the first of them is a book that I've referred to quite a few times. It's called Experimental Methods in RF Design, uh, and that's an ARRL publication. And Chapter 9 is devoted to uh, phasing radios of, of various descriptions. Also include a link to a site called QRP Home Builder, uh, he has an article uh, and even a spreadsheet that allows you to uh, cal calculate your own um, values for all the uh, resistors and capacitors here. Although, what one of the differences is instead of a, uh, he swaps the, uh, the capacitor and the resistor uh, over. So it's a resistor to ground here and then a capacitor on this line here. And then finally, I'll include a link to one of my favorite uh, uh, articles, uh, on the NorCal 2030, there's an Austin presentation there in particular, which uh, goes through in detail uh, an IQ-style radio built from, uh, built from discrete components. So this is the circuit I'll be using, uh, and uh, this is actually taken from that NorCal 2030 uh, article, and it's in, in, incidentally, it's the same one that the uh, QCX uses. Um, now this one's optimized for CW. Um, the, the the actual values of the uh, the the bandwidth and the frequency range of the phase shift network depend entirely on all the values of the resistance and the capacitances, um, and I don't have uh, the uh, the the appropriate resistor values for the um, for the for an SSB one. So what what I'll do is I'll do a, a CW one. It won't be as effective. Um, at uh, at higher free, higher voice frequencies, so it'll it'll be good up to one kilohertz. But beyond that, uh, it doesn't do as good a job uh, at phase shifting. Uh, but you'll still be able to hear uh, you'll still be able to hear uh, the signal. It won't suppress the opposite sideband very effectively, though. Uh, note also on this uh, circuit, I have a, an amplifier straight after the phase shifter. That that's not usual, and I will. You know, eventually, um, usually you have a, a, an audio filter in right here that, that filters out any frequency that's, uh, that you're not interested in. So uh, typically in a CW, for instance, you would have a filter that filters out uh, anything that is outside of, you know, 700 hertz plus or minus 2 or 300 hertz. Uh, but I'm feeding that directly into the amplifier. Uh, I haven't done that just yet, uh, but we'll do it later. Um, and then uh, the board itself, uh, this is my usual uh, uh, construction techniques here with the, uh, the, the emulating the double-sided board. Um, and obviously with these double-sided boards, they're, they're tough not only because you have to get the orientation, the location of the pins very, very accurate, but also you need to construct your own vias. I mean, obviously this isn't plated through whole construction here, so uh, is, is that focusing in? Not very well. But anyway... Uh, that's my, the board I'll be using, um, and uh, what, what, what I'll do is I'll uh, put this together. As you can see, uh, I've, uh, uh, I've got all SMD components here pretty much, except for the, uh, the two audio jacks and the, um, uh, and the, the, the trimmers. Oh, incidentally, the, the trimmers are used to, uh, you can see them right here and here, and what they, they used to do is to actually tweak the phase shift. So obviously you're not going to get exact tolerances on, on any of these components. So uh, the thing, uh, th so these two trimmers here allow you to adjust the phase shift. And we'll be able to see that when, it, when I start testing the circuit. So I'm going to put that board together and then we'll be right back. 
So just a quick uh, update on board progress. As you can see, I've got the um, the op amps, LM358s uh, installed, and most of the resistors. So uh, so progress being made. Uh, it's kind of a little bit slower than through hole, but uh, it's kind of fun too. So the board is finished and ready to test. Uh, one mistake that I did make was I, I forgot to include a decoupling cap between the phase shift portion of the network and the and the amplifier. So I had to actually uh, cut a track here. Uh, this is the this is the connection between the phase shift and the uh, um, and the amplifier. So I cut that track and then added an SMD cap right there. But uh, just going over the board itself, um, so bear with. Uh, so th this is where the I and the Q signals flow in. Uh, these two op amps here form the basis of the uh, the phase shift network. So these two op amps, uh, these two op amps. So this is one op amp. This is the other op amp here. And then these two 50k pots here are used to adjust the phase shift itself. So these. That's this pot here, and this pot here. And then this final pot here is used to uh, affect the balance uh, of, the, uh, of the output. So that, that's this pot here. So that these signals aren't exactly the same in amplitude after they come through the phase shift network. So you use this to adjust the amplitude uh, so that you've got a balance between these two here. And then it flows into the amplifier circuitry here. Move that back a little bit, and uh, that's this op amp over here. So anyway, that's the uh, that's the circuit. Um, moving on to testing, and and I've done this sort of testing before uh, with my QCX videos. What I'll be doing is basically uh, I've got a diagram here for that. So so what I'll be doing is let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. It's basically using my signal generator to, to emulate, uh, or is it simulate? I, I always get those two mixed up. Uh, receiving an upper or, or lower sideband signal from the upstream TALO detector, which would be up here, actually. Um, so uh, an upper or lower sideband signal would be uh, represented either by uh, this guy trailing this signal by 90 degrees or leading it. So my signal generator does have the capability to output two signals, and you can change the phase of those signals. It then passes through this bias circuitry here, and this is pretty simple. All it does is it sets a, a mid-rail bias at 5 volts on the signal, and that's required because these op amps need that uh, bias. They don't have, in the phase shifter, they don't have their own bias circuitry. Um, so... After that, it passes through uh, the phase shifter, and uh, then after the phase shifter, the signal is further amplified, and then you get the output here. So depending on which signal goes to which port on the phase shifter, uh, alters whether the signal is reinforced or the signal is cancelled. So that's basically the mechanism, and we'll see through testing if I swap these leads over, uh, if it's currently being reinforced, reinforced and I swap the leads over, it'll, it'll be cancelled. And that's basically how you select which sideband that you want by altering whether this, this one goes here, and this one goes here, or this one goes here, and this one goes here. Um, now, you can do that in a variety of different ways. Obviously, you could have a double pole, double pole double throw switch in here, you could have a relay. I don't have any of that. What I'll be doing is I'll just be demonstrating that uh, by, by moving the leads around. So I'll move on to uh, setting this all up and we'll have a look at the signals on the oscilloscope. And then we'll actually have a look, ha we'll hear the output uh, to the speakers as well. That's coming up. So please excuse the uh, Frankenstein mess of wires here, uh, but I will explain it. So, so let's just pan up here. Um, so here's my uh, signal generator here, and obviously that's this portion of the circuit here. As you can see, I've got both channels turned on at a, a kilohertz, and I've got uh, this channel here, uh, channel 2, uh, trailing the channel 1 by 90 degrees, So, or, or, or other words, the phase of this is 270 degrees. 
So that's the setup from the signal generator. So moving down to the two circuits themselves. Those two channels flow into the bias circuitry here. They're both here's, here's uh, channel 2, here's channel 1. Flows in through the bias circuitry. We get that 2.5 volt bias set on the signal. That signal then flows in through these two leads here to a stereo connector that goes into the, the I and the Q input on the phase shifter. And then finally, I'm sampling the output right here to my oscilloscope, and that's the output after the amplifier. So it flows in from the signal generator into the 2.5 volt, and this is effectively kind of a stereo signal here. And of course, all this is at audio frequency. None of this is uh, the RF. There's no RF in all this. It's all audio. Flows into the phase shifter here, and then flows out after amplification through this point here. So moving up to the oscilloscope, uh, you can see this is the current output of the signal. As you can see, that signal is completely cancelled at the moment. So let me prove that by just going into channel 2 and changing the phase of the signal to 90 degrees leading, and you'll see that that signal comes into play there. So there's the 1 kilohertz signal, and you can see that this is uh, it being reinforced at the moment. So let's go back to minus 270 degrees. There we are at minus 270 degrees, and you can uh, see that the signal is being completely cancelled there. So let me swap the leads over on the uh, phase shift board. Bear with me, I've just got to swap them over. And you'll see what will happen is that the signal will go from being cancelled to being reinforced. So that's effectively swapping between looking at either the lower sideband or the upper sideband. So it's always good to hear this stuff uh, on a speaker. So what we'll do is, so we've seen the signals on the oscilloscope. Let's move to the speaker and, and hear the results. Okay, so now I've got the output here going to my speaker. And let's turn the speaker up so you can hear it. You can see there, you can hear there, that's the action of reinforcing. So let me swap these two leads over again. Bear with me. Obviously, as I go through and do this, uh, it, uh, I've got to connect both up or it won't, uh, won't actually work. You can hear now that it's, uh, it's a, a, a much uh, diminished amplitude. So let me try and adjust the... Uh, See if I can get a, uh, a bit more attenuation on the signal there. Bear with me. See there I'm going away from, you can hear the signals getting louder. Getting quieter. Now it's getting louder again, so let's go back. And let me adjust the balance between those two as well. The signal's getting louder. Softer, softer. Yeah, that's almost pretty much completely attenuated at that point. So, of course, this uh, phase shifter would be no good if it only worked at a single frequency. So, let's change the frequency uh, up to... up to uh, 1500 hertz now. You can see the signal is still attenuated. So that's, uh, you know, the purpose of the phase shifter is to perform that 90 degree phase shift within a range of frequencies. Uh, obviously, if it only did one frequency, it wouldn't be of much use. Um, so that's basically um, the phase shift network. It's kind of an annoying noise, actually. Let me turn that down a bit. Um, so that's the phase shift network uh, completed and tested. Obviously, the big test is to hook it up to the um, to hook it up to the Talo detector that I constructed in the previous video, uh, and actually get it on the air. I won't do that this video uh, though. I've got some setup to do uh, 
uh, and I've got to drag the whole Frankenstein monster thing out to my office because I don't have a an antenna here, uh, at least not one at uh, not one at uh, forty meters, which is uh, which is what this uh, receiver is built for. So I'll do that in the next video, uh, and we'll also do so, complete that uh, ADC work that I did in uh, in video three and create that uh, uh, that signal strength meter as well. But that's all for for this video.